The mission of the Educational Theater Association in Cincinnati is to shape lives in Ohio and beyond through theater education. The arts give that opportunity for self-awareness and self-expression and also provides the opportunity for social awareness which might not be provided to that student in their everyday life. Being professional artists ourselves and also educators, like we, we hope students love the arts enough to go into it, but at the end of the day, you know, the majority of kids don't. But what they get out of it um, are those really important skills that they can take with them to whatever they do or whatever they decide to major in. The Model Curriculum Framework Project is ultimately a professional development initiative. What we are seeking is to ensure that all students have the best possible theater experience uh, that is available to them. Um, one of the things that we are also thinking about in order to do that is to prepare educators, theater teachers, with the best possible knowledge and skill that will allow them to do that, to ensure that students achieve theater literacy. The reason we created two member teams, one teacher, one teaching artist, is the idea that the theater educator brings the pedagogy, that is the methodology to the table, and the teaching artist brings the artistry to the table. And each of them have some of the other's skills. The smart thing about having, you know, the, the classroom teachers there is that we were all able to kind of go like, it's okay, like <laughs> this is what this means, like, you know, it's just, this is how you have to phrase things and communicate things. And I think just having that FaceTime uh, with our partners and, and being really able to, to kind of talk through and for everybody to bring their experience uh, together at the table, I think by the end of the three days, um, people were on really good footing in terms of starting the project. I hadn't created an MCA model curriculum assessment ever. Um, I'm, I've obviously used them as a student, but I had never created one, so I, I felt a little lost when we were starting. So it was great being able to have Mike there walking me through, in the same time of not looking down at me like, oh, you don't know this, but it was because of the environment that was established by EDTA with all of us coming in, it was definitely all of us learning this together. Mike and I met and we were talking first about what do we bring to the table? So that way we could see what were my specialties as teaching artists coming, what were um, angles he was coming at as a, as a theater educator. and. One of the things we mentioned was that my um, passion, my skill as a physical theater artist and working with the world of Jerzy Grotowski um, and viewpoints and other physical theater techniques and his work as theater educator in the classroom of working th through Meisner and having the students doing monologues and scenes. That's the goal of any artist, no matter what, is to find those moment-to-moment -moment connections, that awareness on stage and of self. And so we're figuring out like how is it possible that we can combine these couple of different techniques in finding it. So I think what we came to is, well, what if we kind of approach it from both sides, you know, trying to, you know, working from the inner life to the outer life and then working from the outer life to the inner life and kind of see if we can come to the middle working from both directions. Mm -hmm. And I think, luckily for us, <laughs> uh, I think, I think we got that result. I think it worked, uh, you know, just by what the, kids were able to demonstrate in their final product. A, B, A, B. One of the beginning a. steps was for B. me to be able to come in to work with the students a. to create a ensemble between all of us and also to establish, establish some of the physical theater vocabulary that we'd be using of just phrases such as kinesthetic awareness, which is the same in any technique of just organic awareness, natural awareness of yourself, of others in the space. Mike and I created a monologue checklist in order to have, make sure that they followed within the requirements of having an active, present monologue. And from that monologue, they worked on it with Mike in class, and we saw it them working on their spine phrase, mm -hmm. um, 
Pass off to you. Yeah, so, you know, the spine phrase is kind of a technique where you sort of get down to what is the deepest level of motivation for the character. And so it's sort of about allowing the actor to dig deeper instead of thinking about just like, oh, well, I'm angry and so I need to be loud and big with my body. It's just like, well, sure, but that doesn't always ring as true to an audience. And so the deeper you can go, the more truth you sort of are able to get out of that performance. From there, we put them into scenes. We put them into groups of three and created scenes from each of their 10 monologues, or each of their 10 lines in their monologues created a scene. And the scenes were based off of either words or themes that were, had a connection between all three of them. You took me, maybe. It really sort of forces them to listen to each other, not just with their ears, but with their eyes as well. Um, you know, listening and really listening and really responding are such important uh, skills for, for actors to, again, really achieve that level of specificity. I think what theater education and what acting education in general should be is, is providing actors with those tools. You know, yes, you want them to engage, you want them to work hard, you want them to try it out. But at the end of the day, you know, to give a good performance, they have to use what works and clicks for them. And I think that's one of the elements that they can take even outside of theater and the arts, of being able to know, like, oh, they're coming, you can come at something from any point of view. Because so often in our education or in our work life, we get into a routine of how we reach from A to B to C. And through this work, hopefully the students were able to understand that there's no right way. There's only just trying. There's just doing it, of putting different pieces together and playing and getting back into that. And the same thing they're able to take then into higher education and to their workforce as well, of knowing there's going to be more ways into solving the problem than just the one way you're used to. You just have to be okay with trying something different. That was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad it worked out. <laughs>